What's up everybody, it's Jesse with Jesse Tucker Boating and today we're gonna go over the Yamaha 2.5. We're gonna go over some key features and starting procedure on this new B model Yamaha F 2.5. So first thing we're gonna go over is the tiller handle. On the tiller handle we have the adjuster for your tension right here, righty tighty lefty loosey. We have our stop lanyard and we have our throttle. Um, our gas cap is the EPA style new gas cap. You'll see there's an off and an on. The indention points to where it is, not the longer uh, knob that gets some people confused. Your fuel shutoff is right here. Uh, the fuel tank with the line through it is off. The regular fuel tank without it is on. Your side to side tension is right here. Righty tighty lefty loosey. So this is going to limit your side to side motion. So if this is a long shaft motor and it will be used on a sailboat. So for on uh, when you're going, you would lock this fairly tight and then use the tiller handle to steer. But maybe when you get in a tighter situation where you're docking the boat you'll have this looser and actually use the tiller handle to give you steerage at lower speed so one unique feature about this motor is that it can be laid on three different sides most four stroke outboards can only be laid on one side it can either be laid on opposite tiller handle side the leading edge or tiller handle down as every other yamaha on the market the one side it cannot lay on is the back side. It's rounded, so if you tried to stand it up on that side, it would fall off. Your access to your spark plug is right under this cap right here. Try to get a good picture. It pops right out, and that's your access to your cap. Your access to your carburetor drain screw is right under this cap. Right there. It's hard to see in the picture, but that's the way it is. To adjust the run angle of the motor, you have four potential run angles right here all the way down is probably where most people are going to be but if you had uh, some kind of a reverse transom or something then you would have to go to maybe one of these higher rings now we're going to pull the cowling off the motor and look underneath the cowling now the cowling is attached by the pull start cord so you cannot lose it now under here this is our dipstick our dipstick is right here remember you don't want it to the high line and you don't want it at the low line you want it right in between if you have it too high it would make it harder to start and your fuel economy wouldn't be too good if you had it too low you'd have low oil pressure now this engine does have a sight glass, but it doesn't really have a function. It literally will just show you that oil is splashing. Um, if you were ever in a situation where you lost your stop lanyard and you needed to get home, you could disconnect this white cable here and that will actually disengage your stop lanyard now this is only for emergency situations do not do this as a normal practice it is not good um so those are the basic features we do have our carburetor adjustments right here this uh, raises and lowers your idle sometimes after the engine's broken you kind of you can kind of set it where you want because the engine's tight when it's brand new and it's going to loosen up. So you could adjust that just a half turn or so, and that will make your adjustment there. So we're going to get ready to put this engine in the test tank, and we're going to start it up and run it. Now remember, every engine under 4 horsepower does not have reverse. It actually rotates to go in reverse, uh, but that does give you full thrust in reverse in every other direction. So, let's get it in the test tank, and we will go over the start procedure. All right, let's get ready to start this motor. Uh, what we're going to do first, make sure our vent is in the on position. We're going to flip that over to on. 
Then we're going to make sure our fuel on the side is in the on position. Next thing we're going to do, pull our choke out. Make sure our stop switch is on. Now we're going to raise the throttle so the choke sign is even with the indention. Then we're going to pull. So this engine was cold and I had to turn on the fuel so it took a couple pulls but normal operation is one pull. All right, we wanna make sure that it's pumping water. The water comes out right below the middle of the bottom. We're gonna let that warm up for a second. You may have to keep your choke out a little bit longer if it's colder out, but if it's uh, a nice, relatively warm day, you should be able to push in the choke almost immediately. Now, to shift it into gear, we just pull the forward lever forward. We're now in forward. Now we can rotate the engine to go in reverse, but because we're running in a test tank, that's not possible. So, your braking procedure for this motor is, for the first two to three hours, we want to keep it at a relatively low RPM, but not at a constant RPM. What we want to do is we want to be varying the throttle so a lot of people think oh i'm supposed to run at low rpm for a couple hours and i can just uh leave it running at the dock and no big deal but that's not what they want they want you varying the throttle uh probably don't go ab above like 30 percent for the first couple hours uh after that you can bring it up for the next couple hours to about 70 percent still varying the throttle now that doesn't mean that we have to saw our throttle and be constantly moving it. What it does mean is, while if we're running at five, like the same RPM for five minutes, 10 minutes, just give it a little more or a little less. It's not a big deal. You just wanna be varying the throttle. Um, and for the final couple hours, what we wanna do is, you still wanna vary the throttle. You don't wanna go wide open. And that's really a very simple braking procedure. So what you're trying to do is keep the rings in, on the pistons. You want them to not wear nice little grooves where they're going to constantly ride for the rest of the life of the motor. Now, if we were to get on the motor immediately and keep it at wide open throttle, what we would be doing is prematurely hardening the, the walls of the cylinder and not allowing those piston rings to make their grooves. And what you would get is, instead of the piston going up and down, how you'd want it, you'll get some twist. And that twist is gonna shorten the life of the motor. So you don't want that. You know, I like to equate it to like raising a kid or something. You know, if you raise them right, then they end up being a good kid. And if you treat them like crap, they're probably not gonna turn out that good. So, Take care of the motor. Braking procedure is one of the most important things, but it's not rocket science and it's not that difficult. But don't, you know, don't just put it in a, you know, tie it off to the dock and just leave it at idle for 10 hours. That would not be good either. So, first service. Your first service is, again, one of your most important services and probably the only one that you truly should go to the dealership for because this is really to confirm that the motor is in a really good spot and that the, there's nothing odd or not correct about it. And if you catch it early, no big deal, but if you let it go on, maybe you'll have an issue down the road. So that's probably a good idea. Clearly you don't have to go to the dealer, but it's not a bad idea. So that first service is at 20 hours. After your first service, Basically, it's every 100 hours or once per year. What that means is, even if you only put one hour or no hours on the engine, unless it was winterized, um, I would change the oil regardless. Even, like I said, at one hour, that oil may become out cl crystal clear, but what you don't see is that the oil has become acidic sitting in the crankcase for that year period. And that, the first thing acidic oil is gonna eat is your bearing material, which is one of the most important things in the motor. All right, everybody, two more things we're gonna talk about today. 
is how to secure the motor to your uh, transom or your, your boat that you're gonna put it on and the tilt procedure. So, to mount the motor, uh, you mount it, tighten the clamps. You can always overlap the clamps and put a lock through the center when they're lined up. And that would keep somebody from stealing the motor. Now, to secure the engine from falling in the water, let's say if somehow it's just not on there tight or it wears free, there's a center hole right here. That's to secure the motor for uh, making sure, even if it falls off, that you still have it, that it's not an anchor or an artificial reef. And third and final is how to tilt the engine up. So what we want to do is basically make sure that the tiller handle is forward. It has to be facing forward to tilt up. We're going to pull the engine up and it's going to lock right there. Once it's all the way up and locked, uh, that's where it sits. To drop it, we're going to pull this pin up and then we're going to push the motor down. Now what makes the engine not uh, kick up when we go into reverse is this u-shaped piece of aluminum that's part of the mid case as it rotates around it's going to lock behind um the plastic tilt bracket and that's going to keep the engine from kicking up in reverse and that about wraps it up for the yamaha 2.5 hope you have a great day